Welcome to the weekly show of What is School for? My name is Dr. I. I'm the host of this weekly live streaming show. On this show, I interview leading education professionals, parents, students, business leaders, entrepreneurs to come here. We discuss, we debate, and disrupt education. And today, I'm really, really excited. I hear, is that on my end, the echo? We are really I'm going to turn off all my other things and hopefully the echo. Yeah, so I don't think it's on my end. Yeah, we have lots of windows open, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, introduce Sue. So this is actually... It sounds like we're at a park now. I know, we have lots of friends. Hey, everyone, so excited to have you guys with us. And please bear with us as we figure out technology. Um, whatever works. Think, Something works. I think it is on Sue's end. But anyway, so <laughs> this is my second time to have Sue back. That is how much I love her work. And uh, so last year, we talked about unschooling, homeschooling, some best practices. So if you missed that interview from last year, and uh, definitely check it out. I'm going to share the link in the chat box. So check that out. And today we are going to dive deeper into one of my favorite topics, which is technology, video games, social media, and our children. I think regardless of your homeschool, unschool your children or not, I think as long as you have children, you are going to run into any of those issues, technology, video games, and um, social media. I'm sure Sue is going to be back. And uh, so I'm so excited to see so many of you here. And for those of you who don't know who is Sue, she is a homeschooling and unschooling expert. She has 25 plus years of experience in this space. She's also a homeschooling parenting coach, and she's a speaker, and she is a podcaster, and she is an author. And I have this book, Homeschool, uh, Homeschool the Teenagers, and I really enjoyed reading this book. It's such a great read. And uh, if you are a parent, this book can give you so much hope in terms of our children. They are wired to learn. It is in their DNA to be curious, to be motivated. But when I see children who are not motivated, something happens. And I think it is a result of how they are being taught. But anyway, that is almost a, a separate conversation. So today we're going to dive deeper into technology, video games, and uh, social media. So if you guys have any questions related to technology, social media, video games, let me know in the comment section. And when Sue comes back, we're just going to get started. And also, I want to give a shout out to StreamYard for being a sponsor of Classroom Without Us. And over the last four years, I have tried pretty much all the third party tools to go live. And StreamYard is my all time favorite. So in the comment section, there's the link for you to check out StreamYard for free for two weeks. And so definitely check it out. And also we are live on all the social media channels. I recommend you guys join us live on Amazon Live because on Amazon Live, I actually featured Sue's book. So let me double check. I'm going to make sure Yes, so it is there in my Amazon store. You can get, you can take a look at her book, right? Regardless if you want to buy or not, but take a look at her table of content and some inspiration. And uh, I don't know what happened to her. And also Sue is so kind. She actually prepared a free download, free download for everyone joining us live right now, okay? So if you just enter, uh, unschooling mom to mom.com and I'm going to enter this link in the chat box. So copy and paste that link and where you can get a free download and that she prepared for us regarding technology games and um yeah. So you just missed it. I was bragging about you. I was like, oh, oh I missed the brag. And you should have oh, said yeah, so thumbs open that it finally you know, I ignore people that say, oh, you have too many tabs. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Only until it's not, right? <laughs> yeah, no worries. And I just send people to download your book. And oh, uh, so, 
Yeah, Alexander, can you also share the link uh, in the chat box? I'm going to send the link. So sh share the link on all the social media channels so everyone can get a copy of this free Wonderful. PDF download. Wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, without any further ado, everyone is super excited to get started. I so, am too. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That means we are really live, right? So let's give us. Uh, so for those people who don't know who you are and what you do, so can you just give us a quick summary of like how did you get started homeschooling right. and yeah. eventually unschooling your kid, and give us a quick sure uh, intro. Sure. Yeah. So I have three kids, and they're grown now. They're twenty-seven, thirty, and thirty-two, and um, they. We were just a mainstream family going to school, doing what you do because everybody goes, you know, and um, I hadn't given it any thought because lots of times people think, oh, you've been planning this the whole time. I wasn't that. It was, <laughs> it was the 90s and it wasn't as well accepted as it is now. And I didn't even, I knew two people and that what they weren't really, I wasn't really friends with them. I didn't understand what was going on. And so, um, my son went to school, went to kindergarten and first grade, and it wasn't a great fit. And he was he had a lot of energy. He just had regular six-year-old energy, and he wanted to run around, and they're like, oh, no, no. And um, But he was really smart, and he just, I mean, average kid smart, not like, but he was mm -hmm. engaged and loved learning. And and then as time went on, he, lo he loved it less and less and less. And I felt like, oh my gosh, we got to do something. This, you know, I look at those big kids, those third graders, they look like zombies in the hallway. And I'm thinking, I, I can do, I can do second and third grade. Let me, let me just, I'll bring them home. We'll figure it out. We'll do something creative. And at the time, what I thought was, I'll just really sparkle up the regular subjects so that it can be a fun way to learn. And even my sparkly approach, once we started that, um, wasn't that great? He really wanted to learn more about the solar system and like stay with it and about the bugs and about the mountains and all these different things. And I ran into some unschoolers and they said, you know, <laughs> when you follow a kid's interest, all those other things get handled. And so I read Mary Griffith's book, The Unschooling Handbook. I read her first one that was the homeschooling handbook. And I'm like, this unschooling thing sounds like it could work for us. And so we started doing that. We started letting the curriculum that I had bought, letting it go. And, um, and it, you know, every year, every, every childhood phase, we start to panic about something. <laughs> so we're like, we get it settled, and then something changes. And so that happened the whole time because somebody else asked me, um, were you just confident all the time? <laughs> no, I had all kinds of fears because all parents have fears, right? And I'm this confident now because I'm on the other side of it and it worked. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to do that whole curriculum approach to have happy, successful adult children, you know? And so yeah. I have this coaching practice where I, that's my whole goal is to like help people see you don't have to duplicate school. You can live this fun, engaged life. And because humans are hardwired to learn and be curious, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> I mean, that's so fascinating. That is so fascinating. I wish it's exactly my experience as we homeschool our children. Because when you got started, you have this idea. We need to you know, stay on track. We need to right, follow the right. curriculum. But as soon as you really pay attention to what your children want to learn, it's like so fascinating. I actually uh, read this article talking about how hard it is actually to stop a kid from being curious. They are hardwired to Absolutely. be curious, innovative right. and curious. And, and then you think about it. Like, you know, after a few years of receiving traditional education, they really lose that spark. But like, this, as you mentioned, you know, I'm yeah, so we have to think about why are they losing that spark? Because they're being forced through this system that isn't really about curiosity. It's about getting, you know, it's kind of like school has this idea of you have this amount of knowledge you need to know. We're going to teach it all to you. Hopefully you'll remember it and someday you might need it. <laughs> Whereas unschooling says we're going to live life to the fullest. And when you get to something you don't know, that's what we'll try to figure out. And that's 100%. where we'll focus on that, on learning it. And then it's in context and it's relevant. And, 
and they remember it and it's useful and they don't develop this gosh i hate learning it's so boring uh, when will i ever use they don't have any of that because it's all relevant I love, I just, I need to give you a hug because this is so powerful, right? And uh, like, this is really how I got started with my business. I knew a little bit about business. I implemented, I came back to learn more. If I had to take a business school, a, a whole set of MBA classes, I would feel 12 so years, overwhelmed. Years, yeah, no, no. It's just not necessary. You know, super artsy kids, they don't need you know, certain things, super mathy kids need more, you, know, you need to be able to individualize it. So school always talks about their IEPs and they're individualizing the program. That is nothing compared to what you can do as a family. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. So we have a very interesting question and then we're going to dive into technology. So okay. here, Dan's asking, was there a point in your life as a homeschooling parent and schooling parent that you just felt like, I got this? Yeah. Um, multiple times, and then, of course, then the rug gets pulled out from under me. <laughs> um, I think that you can, I think it's kind of like layers, you know, it's the Shrek thing of layers and layers. And, and, and I think, too, another good visual is you clean off a lens, you clean off the glass to see that there's something else for you to unpack. And then there's something else for you to unpack. And it just keeps going like that. You can get the basic principles of unschooling, like, I get it that the, that the relationship is the priority, that partnering um, um, is the way to go, and that trusting their biology, that they're curious, and that they are going to learn what they need. It's weird because, you know, you might think, okay, it's fine for them to play. Do you have that same thought when they turn 13? You start to get a little panicky. So different growth and development stages seem to trigger different um worries and so i don't think you ever oh i don't think you ever really got it you know per se yeah. you can have it like <laughs> you can have it like the general part and then it's all it's just an it's life right ebbs and yeah ebbs. yeah yeah it's like uh lifelong learning right we learn unlearn and relearn this is really my journey i learned something i unlearn i relearn i love it and we have 40 plus people live with us oh, everyone yeah. thank you so much for doing us that this is really exciting so let's talk about technology video games and uh, social media because i as we mentioned earlier regardless of your homeschool or not those are some common concerns oh, absolutely. right absolutely so so share with us uh so like what do you think about technology video games and uh, especially as an unschooling or homeschooling parent yeah. i yeah. think in one of your podcasts uh, you mentioned pretty much for unschoolers there's no screen limit right. and uh, like i'm sure everyone's like wow I know, so everyone's like me. she's insane i'm turning this I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? so no, that's it, okay. me that let me let me just unlimited so explain to us yeah, yeah let me back it up before we get into that scary screen limits thing um Technology is just a tool. It's like books. It's like, you know, in the beginning, they were afraid of books or they were afraid of the train or they were afraid of all. It's how we are about all new things. And so we didn't necessarily grow up with iPads and YouTube and all. Well, we didn't grow up with that. And, and so we have fear about it. It seems to be almost like a human thing that keeps happening generation after generation after generation. And then we add on that we kind of romanticize our childhood where we think, oh, it was so great. And we forget that we were running to the pizza place to play Pac-Man or to do, all, you know, it was the introduction of technology. And, um, and so traditionally, Generation after generation fears the, the unknown and the new. So remember that mm. part. And, and remember that what technology does for us is it allows us to have access to information. That when, you know, when I grew up, you bought an encyclopedia set and you kept it. Whether, whether countries changed their borders, <laughs> didn't matter, it still was the old encyclopedia set or you waited till your weekly trip to the library. And now you can find out, oh, there's something happening in, in some place, let me look it up. And you, and all of a sudden that starts you off on another 
trail of learning. And so as unschoolers, and really as parents, we want our kids to learn a lot. We want them to understand about their world. And so technology brings it to us. So when that idea of limiting screen times comes in, I think that what is really, really important is to understand we don't limit it arbitrarily. We don't limit it for two hours. We see that five-year-olds can have one hour. When you hit eight, you can have two year, two hours. And it's just an arbitrary, nonsensical approach. There is no data to support that it should be a certain amount of time. And in fact, what it ends up doing is it makes the kids want to cling to it because it's fun mm -hmm. and it's exciting and they do get to explore their interests at a far deeper level. And then here we are saying, nope, turn it off, time's up. How would you like it if you were in the middle of reading a book and you're getting to the good part in the chapter and the buzzer goes off and you have to close it? <laughs> You'd be like, no. And part of it is because that's familiar to us that we did school subjects and we did in fact turn it off when the bell rang right it didn't matter that the class was finally on a roll not too bad time for jogging <laughs> and so this way they get to go ahead and and explore and play with what they are engaging with um so while i don't say i have a lot of clients, I have a lot of people in my membership group that come with a lot of questions about technology. It's probably the most important, it's the biggest question that people have. And they think, well, all he does is get on technology. And I think that there's a few things to remember is that it's probably not all he does. So let's get rid of this black and white thinking of that is all they do from morning to night. They go to soccer practice. They stop and have lunch. They bake cookies with you. They play a little bit. There are other things happening. So we have to kind of get a hold of that fear that's in our brain mm -hmm. that is like, tell, oh, no, stop, stop, stop. Because we've all been inundated with all of these articles that are anti-technology. Mm -hmm. And we're surrounded, you know, for some reason, parents are very judgy of each other. And it's, we're often thinking, oh, they're going to think I'm a bad mom if I let them be on here all day long. Or they're going to think I'm parenting badly. And if we can kind of shift where we think, what are they doing? Whenever fear comes up, that's the answer. Lean towards it. Shine some light on it. See what are they doing when they are on their screens. You know, calling it screens even is kind of a dismissive, negative way to say it. Think of it as they're researching and they're interacting with friends and they're strategizing and they're developing. You know, they talk a lot about grit. How are they going to learn grit? You develop grit when you stay with something and you keep getting killed off and killed off and killed off and you stay and you try a different way and you try a different way and you try a different way until you level up. So they're learning those kinds of skills just in a different format than what we're used to. And so um, when we can pay attention to what's going on with them and engage with it and not be giving them the side eye, saying, sure is nice outside, wish we could go out someday. <laughs> because then they it puts you against them and their beloved game. And so be on board, be on their team. Show me this cool game. Can I play? And they'll be like, oh, I don't know. Let me teach you a smaller, easier game. <laughs> What would you start me on you know and so it becomes just something you're doing with them not necessarily every game but i mean so a lot of moms get minecraft accounts to try to figure out how to help their kids figure out how to do it and not the mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know if that answers I, I, I love everything you mentioned. I can so resonate. I love how, you know, like as parents, sometimes the more limits we put onto something, the more like to like, I really want to do this, especially when we do give them the time. I have a personal example. I don't know if this is a good context to share, but I grew up in China. So in China, you know, in the US, there is like a drinking age limit. I think yeah. it's like 21, right? But in China, we don't really have a drinking age. At least when I was a kid, there was no drinking age limit. So like we grew up seeing alcohol everywhere, 
but we don't have binge drinking issue. Like when I first came to the US, when I was in my early 20s, I was like, wow, like why are you guys having this unhealthy relationship with alcohol? Because I grew up in a country where just like it is seriously everywhere on school campus. You don't need an ID to purchase any alcohol. But most people don't. Uh, it's very interesting and to see the kind of parallel between what you were talking about, like video games, when we just feel so tense about right. it. Right. This reminds me of my, my, my personal yeah. experience. I mean, it's like yeah. that forbidden fruit concept. As soon as you are told that you can't have it, then you want it. <laughs> and you might not have even wanted it, but you're told you can't have it. So there's something in you that makes you want to like go towards it. So for this, when we say, for instance, just to put it in the technology context, we say, okay, you can be on here for two hours. So at about an hour and a half, they're kind of bored and they're like, hmm. And there's other fun things to do in the house, but they know they only have 30 more minutes. So they stay and they keep scrolling mm. and they try to find stuff. Whereas if we just said, hey, I'm going to break bake some brownies right now. Okay, I'm coming. Because they know they can always get back to it. They know that there's not such a desperate clinginess. And sometimes parents talk about that, that they're, they're so desperate to have it. Is it because you've limited you have, you have created that dynamic. And so if you could remove that dynamic, you might see that, well, you will see that desperation fall away. So like I have a six year old grandson who loves playing on my phone, loves the apps, loves all the things. And, and he also loves doing other things too. So it's just part of a buffet. You know, you might yeah. start out and you load your plate up with cheese and you have all the cheeses. And, and then after a while, you're like, okay, I'm getting a little tired of this. I'm going to have some other things too. And so that's how that works is that when they have freedom, which is really what unschooling is all about, helping kids learn how to handle freedom, then they can start to try other things. They're not super fearful of making a mistake. They'll try it. They'll adjust. They'll come back. And, you know, and when they get a new game and they want to really dive into it, then they can. And then it kind of loses interest a little bit. And it's, and you don't have that added layer of parent judgment and um, anti-technology stuff and all the things that that can trigger in a kid based on their personality. You just bypassed all of that. Yeah, but I love this. Yeah, we'll just play whatever. Uh, yeah. It's so powerful what you said, you know, how to learn how to handle freedom, right? Yeah. Not just like take away their freedom, but actually learn how to handle. I think that's why, you know, I, I, I used to work with the traditional school students and like on a snow day, for example, when the class was canceled, uh, all of a sudden they had the freedom, but they never learned how to handle what? the freedom. And therefore they abused the freedom, right? Doing things they were not about, supposed to do. But if we coach our student to learn to handle freedom throughout right. their life, they wouldn't really struggle that much when there was actually indeed freedom. They wouldn't abuse it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love and it. That's why, that's why with unschooling, we really th focus on this partnering because then we help them learn how to navigate. And you can do that without unschooling. You can even do that while your kids are at school. You can help them figure out how we're going to cope with all this freedom. And what 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 happens if it goes wrong? All right, then we pick it up and put it back together again. And so we don't have this horrible fear of, oh my gosh, I've got to do it right. Which yeah, yeah. That's head. that's and definitely where it's so aligned. You know how to learn how to handle freedom, learn to how self regulate when you do fail, when you do when those things do happen. Not just like we make all the decisions on behalf of our children, we're protecting, protecting, protecting. I think that's why when COVID came, you know, so many schools closed, and all of a sudden, like students lost that external structure to dictate their life and all of a sudden they felt so lost but i feel like at least based on my observation on my own kids they're used to the freedom they're used to designing their day-to-day -day life though they don't feel like i will always need a school standardized curriculum to tell me what time i need to pee to use the bathroom things like that yeah. and we see that too when we have people leave school and start to unschool and the kids are like mm -hmm. tell me what to do and you're like we're going to figure that out together. You know, that doesn't have to be, you know, let's brainstorm about what are some fun life things to do. And, and they're often really convinced that they're going to fail at life if they haven't followed all of those 
um, strategies that schools implement, and then it just isn't true. In my experience, it, there you, you get to learn the way adults learn. Like you were saying, you learn business um, a little bit at a time as you needed it. Well, they get to learn like that. So, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, we have so many great comments coming. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Like Stacy said that talking about social media screen time, the judgment is huge after homeschooling and schooling for four years. Oh wow, we are just now beginning to let go of that. That's amazing. Yeah, I had I had somebody meet me one time. They were we were doing some coaching stuff, and they said my homeschooling group would die if they knew I was meeting with somebody to explore about unschooling. There is such a negativity about it that it, it was just kind of surprising. And um, and yet not surprising because I've heard it forever that people think unschooling is going to be the downfall of homeschooling, that it's lazy or that it's, it's the opposite. It's really tuning into your kids and not using and not saying, okay, we're going to just stay in the shallow end of the pool with curriculum. Instead, we're playing in the whole pool. We get the whole world. We get all of our interests. We don't have to wait for something to come in for less than 14 or something. Yeah. I'm sure there is a journey, right? Like, was it just like, was it hard or not at all for you to really learn to trust your children? Was there like oh, kind yeah. of a mental yeah. battle you have to, yeah. Can I you share that with us? And everybody has a personality, has their own emotional baggage, right? So I was particularly rebellious at school because like I talked too much. And so I was always in trouble for talking. So you're talking too much. You're in trouble, you know. I was smart enough to get by, but I, but I still, you know, so I didn't, the idea of school could, they could be wrong on this. <laughs> that was something I thought of right away. But whether I trusted my kids was another story. So when I had one that only wanted to act and sing and dance, I'm thinking, yeah, but she doesn't know percentages. Does she need? Well, she needs percentages for tips and she needs percentages for um, sales. And because she's in, more in that kind of an acting performance arts type of a world, she'll learn what she needs as she learns it. And so, there were times that I was thinking, okay, enough of Lizzie McGuire. We're not watching any more of that. Mm -hmm. um, and yet that the kid that liked that became um, somebody that is so good with people. Mm -hmm. So it, studying relationships was what she was doing. We don't mm -hmm. get to peel their brain back and see what, what are you getting out of this? But we, when you start to really trust, that their brains will move them in the direction they need because their brains will be bored with stuff they don't need or that they don't prefer. And if you think, oh, well, you need a well-rounded, how much of that do you remember that was not that, not your path? Why not mm -hmm. learn the stuff for your path? And know that doors do not close permanently. If you are not interested in a particular topic, when you're a certain age, it doesn't mean you can't become interested in it later. I learned Zoom in my 50s. You know, learning, we do it. It happens all the time. And so, you know, we don't, we, we get to enjoy it. We get to see that life becomes fuller and richer when we learn more. And so let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I think for me, as a kind of new homeschooling mom, my biggest goal for myself is if I can preserve my children's curiosity, interest in learning, I call that, you know, a win because I think that is really, really important. And it's and what they'll carry with them. Exactly. Like the interest to learn. Information is everywhere. And the traditional school model, they're mainly about teaching the information, which I right. think is simply the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we have phones. All that information is right here. <laughs> we don't need yeah, to dedicate yeah. it to memory when, okay, I don't really remember what river that is between those countries. I'll look it up. Exactly. I love it. And here's a uh, a great comment from Maria, like her 11 year old just loves technology and everything gaming and always learns to create. I think that's amazing. I think creation, you know, is the highest level of learning. If you can teach your kid to create, I mean, that's amazing. And I want you to talk about this. Uh, so I'm sure you encounter this a lot in your coaching, right? So like 
like other people and will think that oh most people think the only way you'll learn in life is to go to school if you don't go to school you are just going to be like you know stupid right. you're whatever gonna work at, you're gonna work at fast food the rest of your life you know maybe you'll be a dog walker maybe you'll <laughs> um hi maria um what i would say about what you're saying Sometimes when kids get in that preteen range, that part of their growth and development is that they're starting to notice where they fit in in the world. And the majority of the world is sending their kids to school. And so they are going to run into that. So they could learn, you know, you have to kind of help them because some friends are going to be incredibly competitive. It is what schools do. They rank you, they, how did you do compared to somebody else? So the fact that those kids would then want to be competitive with you, they have to also defend their position. Why are they being forced to do this? And you are going to the beach? What? <laughs> and so remind your kids, you're just on a different path. You get to do different things. And, um, and, and sometimes they need some rebuttals, like why we got to talk about school all the time? Why do we have to... Um, you know, recognizing that they have strengths and you have strengths too. So helping your kids see their strengths is really important. Um, we have in the membership group, we have the, lots of little PDFs that, um, and one of them is about discovering your strengths and helping your kids see their strengths. And so um, those are really important things to do because this is when they're starting that self-esteem thing. You know, they would have those same kind of criticisms if they were in school. You know, somebody would say, oh, you only made an 80, I made a 90. <laughs> and and then you have all kinds of other negative baggage. So I think that it's just important to help them see everybody brings something to the table. Mm -hmm. And um, we were on a coaching call the other day and somebody was talking about their kid was in a, um, um, an escape room and felt like i don't know any of the math questions mm -hmm. and um but they knew a whole bunch of another topic so mm -hmm. just like on those teams that you do escape room, this person is really good at this this person is really good at that this person is really good at that and it doesn't mean everyone must be good at everything mm -hmm. and so sharing those kinds of stories with them sharing the stories from the book of how people have lived a different life without mm -hmm. school you really are not by yourself you may be by yourself with your neighborhood kids, but it's not everybody. And it, it'll, it does all level out. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was going to mention from Maria is that one of the, <laughs> the plus and a minus, one of the advantages of unschooling is you have this front row seat to what's going on with your kids. So you get mm -hmm. to sparkle up their life. You get to find resources that help them learn and grow and really have a great time. You also, the negative is you have a front row seat to all their angst, all their anxiety, all their fears. They tell it all to you. And my experience is that often they'll tell you, oh gosh, this was so embarrassing. Blah, 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 blah. And then we bring all of our years of embarrassment and shame and all the stories we've had in our head. And we're thinking, oh my gosh, and that kid has gone skipping off, doesn't care about it anymore. And we're sitting here racking ourselves with all kinds of concerns. How can we overcome this? And it, it sometimes is okay to just say, yeah, it's hard when people are mean. Yeah, it's hard when people can't quit that comparison thing. You know, I'm so glad you don't do that. And yeah. Then put them in it because that's part of this for our path on, uns on unschooling as parents is learning how to deal with our anxiety. And so often we want to like clean that up, compartmentalize, get the lid down, and kids feel better. <laughs> and sometimes they're not going to feel better fast. And that's okay. Yeah, I love it. I love what you said. And also you mentioned it's kind of early. I think learning that self-regulation, when those things do happen, like how do you like self-regulate? And I have to say that, you know, when you like, I have only, like, I have three kids, but the third one is like a baby, doesn't really come. But my other two kids, they learn so differently. Like one is really into math, surprisingly. Another one is really into literature. And they 
my the kid who's into literature can spend the whole day reading. Like the other one just loves building a math related games. Right. It's so interesting when you think about those are the kids from the same parents. How different right. they learn. Imagine in a classroom of children from different parents, but they are all forced to learn one way. Yeah, it's just like really uh, doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. So I want to go back to what we're talking about here, and I have some more questions uh, about video games. So I'm curious, like, uh, like Sue. So when when you unschool your kids, did you allow them to play whatever games they have? Because I don't know how. Like, like there is some stuff. There are some studies. I don't know how true they are, and there is also this maybe an educated fear that if you are playing violent games that your kids are going to be more violent or those like behavioral issues. So what do you think about this? Okay. So I think that there, for every study that goes one way, there's a study that goes the other way. Remember that about statistics. You know, you have to always look at who, who was forming that study. What was their motivation for it? What, what were they trying to gather the data to support? <laughs> Cause that's often what that's about. Um, because we are seeing a lot of research, and I have some links for people if they want them, um, a lot of research to say none of those worries are founded. There was one recent, there was, I wrote this down so I could be sure to tell you, some Oxford, um, University of Oxford scientists published a paper recently of 350,000 teenagers that they talked to, and they did not have all the adverse effects from pay, playing video games that everybody was afraid of. Mm -hmm. I have a huge collection of articles that talk about when you really look at the information, it's not, it's not coming true. My personal experience is kind of anecdotal, but my kids watched tons of TV, played tons of video games, did tons of other things too. And, um, and they have, they went and got jobs. I remember thinking, oh, my kids are going to have to work um, the night shift <laughs> because they're nocturnal. You know, as they became teenagers, they were very up late, sleeping like, early. You know, they didn't get up early. And, um, and that's not what happened. They got a job at Barnes & Noble where they had to open the store at 7 in the morning. And they got up and did it because mm -hmm. they wanted to. We're always so mm -hmm. afraid that they're not going to be able to do something because of this violence my kids were watching power rangers all the time doing moves off the back of the couch doing you know playing airsoft with kids and you know they're not violent people at all and, mm -hmm. and time and time again that's what we're seeing that just because somebody watches it doesn't mean oh yeah now i want to go rip someone's arm off no, <laughs> it's a cartoon. It's 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 digitalized. Even on some of those games that are like really, um, for me, they're very um, what do you call it? Where it's just kind of in your face. And <clears throat> some kids are going to gravitate away from it. Some kids are kind of curious about it. We don't know what they're curious about. Are they curious about the dynamic? Are they? Curious about the graphics? Are they curious? You know, there's so many things involved in a story. But we have always read stories that had all kinds of horrible things happen. Every Disney story kills off the mother. You know, there have been <laughs> we we survive. We we That's and true. it's not just survive, it's part of a storyline and how you build that arc and you take away everything that is safe so that you can have a little bit of scariness and then the, the hero resolves the problem and there's your story and so the same thing happens in storylines in video games it it is not none of the research is pointing to um kids are doing terrible things because now they're watching video games it's just not there yeah, I love I love it. And I know like uh, you have so many resources on your website. Can you share some with us talking about actually the positive aspects right. of video right. games? I know one book I read is called uh, Reality is Broken. I think that's the title. Oh, it's so good with Jay McGonagall. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That was a great book. We just, yes. did, we just did a, um, it's another book. We just did a book club in my membership call and the topic was bad for you. Um, exposing the war on fun and there's a whole chapter on technology and how we are 
how society works against it. It's an interesting book because it's written in kind of a comic book format. And so um, I, I, you know, I'm used to a more structured type of a way to learn. So I was like, oh, this is, it was hard for me to focus on a comic book format. But it was an interesting way to deliver the information and to show how, how we, um, how um, articles and um, support against things that kids like or that are fun and how, how society says they're bad, whereas it's really not. It's the, let's dig down a little deeper and see historically why were they saying that? Well, they were trying to get something to happen, and so then the, and then all of a sudden people bought into it because we have fear, because we have judgment of each other, and um, and so we we kind of go with that. You know, we see that on Facebook where people do a whole lot of shaming about kids and mm. screens and. Um, and the articles, I have a, that web page that you have for them has tons of articles on there, tons of books and um, videos and blog posts and just a giant collection. And what I would really recommend to anybody is to just read an article a day over coffee. <laughs> um, oh, I have yeah, this here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you go down, I mean, the, I have a technology guide, which is easy to it, what I have done is taken all of the, well, let's, this is a free thing that I'm happy to give everybody that I just pulled together, that PDF that you can get that shows you what are the advantages and just a little bit of the articles and things to help you start to embrace technology. This guide is if we dive down a little deeper, where all, all of the years of me talking with other people, working it through myself, or watching other families work through it, I've taken that and made it into um, a little mini magazine that's all about how we say things to our kids about their technology and how we might not even realize that we could be causing more problems than not. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good thing to get to. And But this page, if you, if you took every morning over coffee and you just read another article, you read another article, you just bookmark it up at the top, um, where, so that you can get back to it and work your way through it, you can start to dismantle the fear because that's the whole answer about fear, right? It just needs more information. When yeah. we still want no information and we're just afraid we're going to screw it up, um, if we could just get more information. Yeah, I'm just looking at the titles here. They're so like encouraging. And I love Dr. Peter Gray. Oh, also yeah. Interview interview him on the right. show yeah talking about the benefits and just like so encouraging as you mentioned you know dismantle lots of our fears yeah right 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 and so that little graphic about thinking about the function when somebody says what's wrong with screen time and you think about what are they doing so instead of thinking of it all as one monolith then you think of it instead of all the different activities that they get to perform and you get to think you're doing it you're watching us on here now you know, yeah, and, and with each other. Yeah. 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 This was a long time ago. I was at a talk with Peter Gray. He was that's so amazing. Yeah. I already shared the link uh, in the comment section. Everyone's okay. like, uh, definitely uh, check it out. Yeah. And uh, so, oh, yeah. So, if you can just like uh, ask benefits, so if you can check out that list, I already shared in the yeah. comment section. Perfect. You can just like, books the only one that i know is like uh reality reality is broken uh -huh. it's a fascinating rate it's a great it is. book it is it is and this one, right? there we go oops <laughs> this will really help you if you need some reassurance about okay are they gonna be okay <laughs> what is their life gonna look like and, you know i interviewed 75 young people from 15 to 39 and they talked about what their life is like without school and they shared about their hobbies and about, you know, getting jobs or going to college or all different, um, it's straight from them. And so it's really nice to just think about what are you afraid of? How oh, will they make friends? Um, are they going to hate me in the end? Go to that chapter and read all their answers. And then you can yeah. be the side, really. it's uh, absolutely i highly recommend if, especially those of you guys watch us live on amazon live and you will see that i pinned this book just click on that link oh, okay. 
yeah, yeah, you can just order. I have a. Uh, we're going to wrap this up soon because I have to uh, give a talk about social media. You know, to dismantle people's uneducated fear when it comes to technology and social media. But I do. I know there's a website called Common Sense Media. And they actually rank like uh, video games. So when you like when our children are playing video games, like do you guys actually rank the games? Like, hey, this is not a problem, or just like all games are just like. You don't well, really I think I would find out what do they want? Why are they asking? Where did they hear mm -hmm. about it? What, you know, and then you could look and see, all right, so you like this kind of game. Maybe we won't play that one. Think about what part of it can you say yes to? Mm -hmm. And and if they're like, no, I have to play Grand Theft Auto or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, then get it and watch it with them. Talk mm -hmm. to them about it. Find, you know, let's talk about it. And because if you make it that forbidden thing, then the first thing they do when they go to a sleepover at their friend's house with older siblings is that's what they're going to be playing. So far mm -hmm. better for them to play it with you right there next to them so that you can say, wow, in real life, what would happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and it's just you don't want to do that too much because you could totally <laughs> over narrate their their games or their stuff they're watching. But. But it gives you an opportunity also to gather data and to see what part of it is it that they like about this. Mm -hmm. Odds are they don't like the killing of it or something like that. There's something else. Maybe they just like being able to say to their friends, I watched it, I played it, and they, you know, okay. And, um, That's true. you know, so think about what, instead of just immediately having that fear and think, oh my gosh, she's eight. Um, like about, that, like right, the anger. Yeah. Like, ah. yeah. Instead, think, okay, what part of this can I say yes to? And then you get your fear under control by gathering the information you need. And then you're like, all right, we'll, we'll try a little bit when dad comes home, or we'll try a little bit when I have time. Yeah. To that's such a great idea. This is really like collaborative parenting, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good have part of it. Yeah, I have lots of assumptions about this. We're actually collaborating on this together. Hey, let's check out this. Have a discussion about this, like collaborative. I, I love this. Yeah. 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 Because they might have a friend that watches all kinds of things. And then you can say, well, you know, what, you know, why do you, and then it turns into a conversation about their friendship with them, you know, and different things that are happening. Just one thing leads to another when you engage with your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like such a fascinating conversation. I mean, like I have like two pages of questions, <laughs> but this is what happened last time. Maybe I it is. It is. That's why we came back. <laughs> but I just love it. Everybody's just loving this conversation. We still have like forty plus people with us. This is a fascinating. But to wrap this up, so and share with us, like maybe some of your. Uh, like things that we haven't had a chance to discuss regarding social media, technology, and the video games. Are any, any parting piece of well, the only the, the only thing, and we kind of said it a little bit, but we, and there's a lot of articles on that web page that can kind of help you dismantle it. Um, is to not get caught up in that whole concept of shaming about social media. Oh, my childhood was this, and now their childhood is that, and it's mm -hmm. that. Don't get caught up in that because. Your kids have live in the now. Help mm -hmm. them figure it out and what to do. Not just forbid them to be in the now because they've got to live some way you used to live, which isn't even accurate because we have kind of a rose-colored glasses when we look back at it. But if if you can simply, anytime you're afraid, get more information about mm -hmm. it. If it's a particular game you're afraid of, learn more about it. If it is technology in general, learn more about it. If it is social media, learn more about it. Mm -hmm. Is your kid social really into getting more likes on their Instagram, whatever? Then do stuff with them. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe instead of banning TikTok, send each other funny TikTok videos. Mm -hmm. you know, the way the algorithms work is that if you if you like and comment and share on stuff that is good, you know, for want of a better, then they'll send you more of that. Mm -hmm. If you just stay hands off, it sends you all kinds of things because it doesn't know what you would like. Mm -hmm. So like for my six-year-old grandson, we have kids YouTube. We like the things that are the people we really like. So we get more stuff like that and less stuff that I would think isn't really appropriate for a six-year-old. Yeah. So that I, 
I so agree. I think instead of having so much uneducated fear, why don't you educate? Right? Instead of banning this, can you actually educate our your children regarding the correct way to approach this and talk about learn together? Right? Like let's come figure this out. I love. I'm such an advocate of using technology for good. Using social media for good, banning and hiding and punishing, taking away, it's not going to solve the problem. It just as no, it was no. It's Make like it that, you know, the martial arts thing that's about you can come straight at it or you can go with it. And, yeah, the and that you can yeah. have a lot more um, success if you can yeah. be trying to just go against everything. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. It's just so fascinating to see how my own children approach social media. And there will be like scammers. I will actually talk about it. How do you password security? How do you right. spot scammers? So it's so educational. So much to learn. You're right. They need your help. Don't yeah, don't. exactly. Because if you if you shy away from it, they're they're more at risk. Because then exactly. they can figure it out on their own or trust their exactly. friends. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather be the person who educate my kids than they learn from random people, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Oh, so good stuff. I know this is amazing. So I have been sharing your social media handles, but please do share with us for people who love you. I don't know why people wouldn't <laughs> just love your work. So share with us, like, what is the best way for people to stay in touch with you, connect with you, and continue you, the conversation? Okay, if you go to unschoolingmomtomom.com, we have a lot of little paths for you to take, kind of like your own find your own adventure books. Remember this that you could go to one ending and it takes you to something else. If you're just considering unschooling. There's a whole path to help you figure that out. If you are moving from homeschooling to unschooling because homeschooling is just not working, um, let's talk and maybe you could become part of the membership group that has a lot of families that have done exactly that. And so we get together with coaching calls every week, multiple. And there's a huge member resource area where I just keep making PDFs. <laughs> I just keep making resources for people. And um, and if you're like, no, I don't have time for other people, I have a course that's jumping into unschooling that is something to kind of help you get a good foundation if that would be something um, that you feel like you need. So there's a lot. You can always contact me on Facebook at Unschooling Mom to Mom or Instagram at Unschooling Mom to Mom. And, um, and I have the podcast so there's just so many different ways and youtube um yeah reach out i'm happy to help you find resources oh i do have a new thing that's called um q for sue <laughs> and it, it is an automated form that you can you'll find it at the website that if you have a question you're like help me find resources i'm worried about a typical day or i'm worried about socialization or i'm worried about technology and it will give you a bunch of resources to help so lots of ways to get you information i'm happy to do it Oh, thank you so much. It's such a fascinating conversation. I just saw these comments from Stacey. Yes, definitely. Talk about it, right? Like collaborative parenting. That's kind of what I'm from authoritarian. <laughs> Listen to me to more like a guide on the side. So really, really powerful. And thank you so much, everyone, for yeah. joining us live and love staying it. until love the it. end. Like I love the discussion. As you can tell, I'm just like really excited about this topic. And Sue has been so amazing. Please definitely follow her, check her out, website, podcast, everything. I have learned so much. And again, final plug. Final the plug. plug. Right. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so if you enjoyed today's conversation, make sure to come back next Friday. I actually have a young person who is a, a traditional schooler, but he's also very non-traditional. He has his own business. I think a high school student. So come check us out next Friday or Saturday, same time, same location. And thank you so much again, Sue. Thanks for having me. It was super fun. All right. Yeah, bye, super, super fun. Yeah. Bye, everyone. See you next week.